I picked up one of the rarest Game Boy lights ever made from Japan. It's in an absolutely terrible condition, but that's good because that means entertaining content. Um, I'm really excited to give this a clean up. I don't know what it's going to look like afterwards. Uh, the, the shell is very discolored, which is a big shame. That can be reversed with retro brighting. If this video gets 3,000 likes, I'll do that in a separate video because I want to look at a couple of different techniques I haven't covered on this channel before. Um, so we can definitely do that, but I think it's still going to clean up and look very nice regardless. The screen needs to be repaired. It's a Game Boy light screen, so there's actually no reflective film behind. It's just an, a, an electroluminescent panel, uh, as you do. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into the video. So I paid a grand total of $79 for this with $20 shipping, which is a lot of money, but these things can go for about $300, uh, even more than that loose. Uh, it's got quite a lot of weird gunk and, and stains on it and stuff, but more significantly, it's missing the battery cover, which is a shame. Um, I have got a 3D printed one, which is gonna go in there and you know complete the device, but it is gonna be missing that for a while. Maybe one day I'll find one um, from Japan on Sendico or something. Something. But yeah, so this is the the listing of it right here condition is used. There is no problem in movement It's a Japanese version. There is some scratches on the screen There is a burn in the center of the screen and there is liquid crystal. Oh Dear I didn't read about the liquid crystal causing leak um, Well, I can't see any of that. Okay, so let's give it a go and see if it does anything I am a little bit upset that it says that there's crystal leak damage um, But I can't see any of that right now. So here we go Oh, yes, that is working. And we got sound, that is a surprise. So as you can see, the screen is very, very badly damaged and you can hardly make out my character there. <laughs> But um, yeah, okay, well, we'll have to uh, repair that screen, obviously, anyway. Some people might be interested in having a look at the different stickers. We've got some Vodafone ones here. I don't really know what any of these characters are. I do recognize this little dude um, and this person, but I'm not actually sure where from. People will definitely leave a comment saying where it's from in the comments below, I imagine. That is the uh, label from the seller. That's just how they keep like a stock inventory and make sure that you get the right one once you buy it. So that wasn't authentically on there from original. There's some more Vodafone stickers on the back. It also says Mario 10th anniversary underneath there, which is kind of cool. Oh no, that's Wapro. Maybe that's who that person is, Wapro. Wapro 10th anniversary. There's also a World Cup 2002 FIFA World Cup sticker there. Some more Vodafone stickers on the back and uh, there's some residue from where there were some stickers. Well, that's not too bad. You may be able to see there's a load of dust down here. I don't know if you can uh, see that there, but down here there is a massive congealed pile of dust. Um, on the back of the uh, cartridge shield, it's quite dirty, <laughs> which is really nice to see. Um, also on the back of the actual cartridge slot, let's see if I can get an image of this. Um, Possibly not, but yeah, there's loads of dust on the back of there as well. But actually, that doesn't look too bad so far. There's no corrosion, so good job to the person who owned this originally. It looks like the stickers might be in pretty good condition underneath there. Now on a Game Boy Light, there's actually four screws because there's an electroluminescent panel behind here and uh, the extra screws helps make the good contact. There's also this little electrocution symbol because there is a step up converter inside to power the electroluminescent panel. And that is the motherboard out. Oh, we've got a little insect looking thing. That's what we like to see. What is this little specimen? I'll send that out to the lab. Okay, time to uncover the buttons and see if there's anything exciting underneath. 
Not too bad for that first one. Again, not too bad for the second one either. This really looks like it was well loved, but not abused. That one's got a little bit of a finger Cheeto, or what's it if you're in the UK. Uh, D pad's not too bad. Actually, you know what? This is really good. This is in uh, exceptionally good condition. I've seen much worse. I'm trying to be all fancy with my tweezers, but realistically, that ain't working very well. Now that's what I was talking about with the uh, electroluminescent panel there. You can see these two little contacts uh, and they're also a very delicate contact. That is like a metal sort of oxide thing um, as opposed to like a metal contact on the board. I don't really know how to describe this, but basically you need to be careful scrubbing that. Um, but you can see those contacts there, match up with that and then light it up. And then there's the step up transformer. Okay, so let's very gently lift out the screen. And we've got our power switch there. All of this stuff is gonna go into the sink to soak. Let's see if I can just take out the battery contact, which is a Game Boy Color battery contact. So if that one is destroyed, don't worry. Um, so let's get all of this stuff ready to go into the sink. So we need to remove this panel first. So let's do that. It's quite simple. We just need to slide it out from underneath the back of the ribbon cable. There we go. And that looks absolutely pristine condition. Very happy with that. Set that aside, it's really delicate, so just be careful with it. And then here is our screen. Okay, well there is actually no pixel leakage on that screen, so I don't really know what they were talking about. That must have just been like a generic thing that they put in there, but um, one thing I am slightly worried about is that that burn is actually on the back. So if this goes really badly, a little while ago we did a refurb on the Anna Game Boy Pocket, um, and I took the screen off of that, and this is that screen. Now this screen, is not gonna just automatically work in the Game Boy Light because on the back there is a reflective film. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and take off the front polarizing film on this. If we break the screen or whatever, we've got a backup one um, because we're still gonna have to probably remove the back filters on these. Please excuse the slightly dirty nails. I've been restoring an old 80s road bike this week. Okay, here we go. Let's try and uh, peel this off. You know what, we may be in luck. We may be in luck. That might have just been on the back. <gasps> Very exciting. Okay, so there is actually a lot of damage on here, um, but this is the glue that's sort of gone really, really hard and then cracked. Right, I'm not gonna film or I'm not gonna film all of this because it's gonna take a really long time, but it basically just involves a little bit of this.
that is going to conclude our video on the Game Boy Light. Wait. Wrong video. And that is going to conclude our video on the Game Boy Light. I am really, really pleased with how this has turned out. It's looking absolutely fantastic. It looks 10 times better than it did at the start. Um, yes, it's unfortunate about the 3D printed battery cover. Um, really quickly, I'm probably not going to retrobrite this. However, if this video does get 3,000 likes, I will do a whole video on retrobriting different types of Game Boy shells. So we'll have colored ones, clear ones, you know, and then regular ones to compare them to, and using different types of materials as well. It's gonna be an expensive video, but I think it'd be really cool. And if it gets 3,000 likes on this one, I'll do it. So this is the Astro Boy Game Boy Light, and it looks really good. Unfortunately, the screen now doesn't look the same as it should look. Uh, here's a couple of other Game Boy Lights for comparison. So we've got the, uh, the Toys R Us one here, and then we've got a regular gold one. Um, and as you can see, the screens are very different. They're meant to be that sort of gray color, and now it's green. And that is just down to the polarizing filter on the front. Now, providing I haven't damaged this screen, which maybe time will tell uh, if in the process of scraping some leaked pixels may, may occur, um, once I find the right polarizing filter, there's nothing stopping me from just removing this one and putting the right one on because that isn't an adhesive um, polarizing filter on the front there. That's just a regular one. So I can actually swap that out very easily. But yeah, look at this. It looks absolutely terrific. The contrast is fantastic. I mean, it's gone from being disgusting and unplayable to beautiful and playable. There's a little bit of damage on the actual Astro Boy face there, but if you flick throughout the video, especially when I'm disassembling the front of it, you can see that damage was always there. It was just hidden by the sticker, but that is not too bad, especially for the low price that I paid for it as well. So let's play a little bit of Solar Striker, a game that we all love on this channel. All of the buttons work absolutely beautifully as well. Really, really pleased with how this has turned out. Hopefully you can see the backlight there. Not sure if you can or not. It's absolutely pitch black in this room right now. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully you can still see uh, the screen, which is obviously the point of the Game Boy Light. It's a very, very cool color as well. It's that sort of vintage digital watch color, which everybody likes. So that is gonna wrap up the video on this Game Boy Light. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. It's been a lot of fun. I love doing Game Boy Light uh, refurbs because they're just super interesting uh, inside and also my favorite Game Boy. Uh, so yeah, if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and uh, subscribe if you're new to the channel. We are so close to 300,000 subscribers. So if you watch these videos and you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.